centres, like this one, can often be seen in Yunnan, in the countryside and in the big cities. This is a tiny van with an open diesel engine. It makes a very loud noise. Seeing vans like this on the streets is always a surprise, particularly in big cities like Lingkang. They're used to deliver heavy loads, sand and bricks, building materials. They are very slow and noisy, but they're still very widespread. These vans are cheap and cheerful. Modernization and development have affected the way China looks today, and even the way shops and cafes look. In tiny towns, like this one, we're in Fenqing at the moment, you can see Western-style cafes, which look similar to Taiwanese cafes from 10 years ago, or cafes from Europe or the States from some decades ago. The inscriptions are in English, with photos, flowers and light colours. This cafe is a wonderful example. I suppose that the owners went to Europe or North America or some other place to learn. Maybe they travelled a lot and have seen a lot. But it's clear that the locals aren't ready for this. Almost all the cafes are empty. People in China have a very interesting, simple and effective peculiarity. They're constantly doing something. They can only do three things, eat, sleep and work, and nothing else. So explaining some abstract concepts to a Chinese person can be very difficult. Like just sitting or just walking. They always walk for a purpose, to see something or to get somewhere. All actions have a clear goal. If there's no goal, there's usually no action. I have met a few people with an abstract approach to actions, but you don't meet them very often. What I particularly like, and what I enjoy speaking about, is that almost all houses, in small towns especially, are organized in a particular way. His workspace is on the ground floor, and living rooms are on the first and second floor. For example, here the workshop is on the ground floor. He's making wooden rails now, and the living rooms are on the first floor. Small business is very important for the Chinese economy. In villages, they work in the sphere of agriculture. They have some small business, their own craft. Taxes are very low, or there are no taxes at all. Starting a business is relatively simple. All the businessmen I talk to are really happy about it. Usually, when we start working with new tea factories and smaller producers, I like small producers the best. We spend a lot of time getting acquainted. We explain what we want, what quality is suitable, that we don't need dust and fannings. 
I look at every handful of tea and separate the whole leaf from dust and broken leaves. We also separate tea from other leaves and stems. This tea is Menku Da Yezhong, by the way. This tea has a big leaf and is relatively cheap. But still, we have to show that we need a good quality product. Every nuance is important. We'll still have to check everything later as well. But showing your approach is very important. They start understanding that if they send us low quality tea next time, they won't get paid. Here's a small story about the most difficult thing in our business. It's not going on long trips to China or spending time on long journeys. The most difficult thing is tasting tea. It needs time and expertise. You need great experience. I still have a lot to learn. And even though I've worked in this sphere for a long time, the learning never ends. Tasting and choosing tea is very difficult. Mid-range tea in particular, that's not very expensive. There's a great choice of teas that you have to select from. And you have to try tons of different samples. And the tea changes every time, so you have to do it regularly. This process never ends. It's a robotic and monotonous routine. People think that our work is fun. And maybe it is sometimes. But mostly it's very tough. Especially when you taste bad tea for the whole day. Like this one on the left. Also, saying no to people that you've been talking to all day is very unpleasant. But you can't buy their tea because it's bad. And that makes it very uncomfortable. Only 5 to 10% of all the tea that you try is good. And to find that 5 or 10% you have to taste a lot. That's why I take my colleagues and friends with me. You really need the support. Enjoy your tea.